Hey there, John here. And I want to take a moment here to uh, unpack a framework that is uh, essential and it guides a lot of the thinking that you're going to be doing around your objectives and, and focus zones that you want to strengthen um, on your math improvement plan for your school or your school district. And we're going to kind of, uh, before I do that, I'm, I'm before I share that, that framework and unpack why that framework is, is essential, I'm just going to give a quick overview of where, where that lives in the district improvement program here, you know, like the, the four stages um, that we've been talking about. So, um, you know, just as a, as a quick overview, we've been, we've been highlighting that there are six components that are essential for strengthening math classrooms, but also math districts. And, you know, these six live in the framework that we're, we're going to be talking about, but the six also live in the, in the four stage cycle, uh, in the four stage flywheel of this improvement plan. You, you are, you know, you're invested in the work of creating math improvement plans that are sustainable, aligned, um, uh, you know, make sure they're impactful. Um, they're focused on the right things and we're measuring the right things. So when we do that, we strengthen all six of these components up. Now, in our system, we look at that, that as the flywheel where we make sure if we are designing appropriate measures on appropriate goals um, and we're optimizing our current professional development structures, we can then focus on what matters, which is building capacity for teachers as the linchpin for unlocking the instructional practice we want to be seeing in our classrooms with our curriculums, with appropriate routines, with appropriate structures for getting thinking out and, and productive problem solving. And these are the things that we can unlock to achieve the goals in the vision for the math um, that you're looking for. And then we can start you know, making sure that we're focusing on growth. Like how do we build the actual sustainability component? How do we create leaders that we're going to inspire the next generation or leaders we can leverage so that we don't have to call in outside help. We want a strong program. And then that's where that cycle comes from. So the framework I want to unpack here today lives in stage, you know, in stage one, we're in stage one right now. If you're watching this video inside the course or inside, say, an email that you were sent. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to zoom out here overall. Here are the frameworks, the structures, the lessons, you know, what we have to do together um, to achieve that flywheel effect um, that we're after. Um, so we've got, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and, and the lessons and the ideas and the structures we need to build. Um, so I don't want that to overwhelm you, that that's, that's what's coming, but know that there are structures and, and things that are coming that we need to kind of focus in on. Um, so for example, like we're not here yet, but we do need to unpack what what professional development structures should we be focusing on and how have you been focusing on them so far? Um, and maybe we need to tweak some. Um, but that goes hand in hand when we create our math improvement plans tracking sheet and how, and how we're going to make sure that we're tracking things, which goes hand in hand with how we choose our action items, um, which we have to decide on how we're gonna commit to. So all of that is linked together and it links into what we actually do to build capacity and what should we be focusing on and, and where are those resources and how do we structure those resources? It's, it's all connected here um, and we are going to get there. That's what this course is. That's what the support you're receiving um, in our group calls or in our individual calls if you have access to those individual calls. But let's zero in on stage one here. Let's zero in on this objective. So you know, we, if you are watching these videos in sequential order inside the course, um, you've already kind of gone through the work uh, to create your vision for math and or maybe you're kind of tweaking your vision currently. Um, and that's where this part is here is, is the magic wand wish list of what are the things that we want. And then we're starting to kind of like narrow that wish list down into creating um, a, a compact vision that can be easily shared with all stakeholders to give everyone a sense of like, this is what mathematics class is. It's kind of that overview uh, uh, statement that we want uh, we want everyone to kind of be looking at. So if I'm going to focus on objectives here, like we're, we're getting close to, you know, focusing on, on what are the focus zones that we want to be, you know, making sure that we're making change on. And those focus zones, you know, and I think we've talked about this before, is that many times we choose many things that we want. And, and it makes sense. We want, we want everything under the sun. We want so much to change that we say, yes, we're not going to say no to everything. But if you really want success and you really want impact on those things, you have to say no to things. You have to say, I'm going to focus on one thing at a time, or at least I'm going to plan uh, to support one thing at a time. And if I can plan out in detail how to support that one thing and make change on that one thing, and then I still have capacity to focus on another, then we choose another and then we'll do that. Um, but 
we need to understand this framework before we can start making those choices. So there's a framework here that uh, we, we have uh, utilized in the past, which is the from everything you need for, for mathematics coaching, uh, which was, uh, you know, written um, by an author that, uh, or a collection of authors that we've interviewed on our podcast. I think all of them, it's possible we have interviewed on the podcast um, and Jenny Bay Williams multiple times. Um, but they've got a great framework here to, to build off of. But I want to I wanna point out why this framework isn't complete. Um, so, for example, let me just outline what they view as their framework for mathematics coaching. But in a way, it, it helps define what objectives or focus zones we should be looking at um, to make sh strength on across the district in a unified way or an aligned way. Or if we're looking specifically at a school, uh, we can be isolating, say, those objectives and picking them for the school. It, it, it's, it's, it's a fractal process. You know, we could be doing it at school level, district level, um, even state level. Um, we've been, you know, we've been working with uh, some, some seemingly even small countries um, to do this process. So it can work at a fractal level. And then we want to make those action items at that fractal level. So let's, let's unpack this. Um, we, there are three kind of, three kind of areas that they uh, highlight here, which are, let's make sure that we understand the mathematical pra uh, practices uh, for our students. Um, these are student experiences. Uh, these are the math practice standards. These are process standards. Um, we talked about that in our vision statement and how do we make sure that we embed that component or some of those ideas into that first component of our, our vision. What are students doing? What do we want our students to um, have experiences on? So we do need to start there with our with our with uh, with the, the, the objectives and thinking about those. And we're going to argue uh, that you know when you pick your objectives, they should be student focused. They should be like this is the outcome I'm looking for in my classrooms for students. Um, and then we can then reverse engineer from there. But that's what they are starting with. So let's let's think about the math practices um, as, a, as a starting point. We need to kind of say, what, which practice are we looking to exude in our classrooms? Um, which a couple, you know, let's, let's start there. Um, then they say, you know, each of those practices usually are going to require, because, because it's relatively new, we've got an army of teachers who have taught and learned math um, very traditionally, uh, like you, like me. Uh, we've all learned math that way. We all started teaching math that way. And then and then with new information, we start to make shifts. And so we now know that, you know, the math practices are, are good uh, learning experiences for students. We've got research backing that. Um, but then they require shifts in the classroom. Like we, they require classroom practice to shift, teacher practice to make shifts. We have to decide which shifts help with which practices. That's what this framework is saying. Like if we can identify the practices, then we can look at what teaching moves we can pick. Uh, to focus in on to create opportunities for students to engage in those those learning experiences makes sense um, so the middle part here is focusing on teacher moves teacher practices specifically um, and then that includes like well now can we group some of those together and focus focus on zones um, these what we call objectives like what are the zones that we really want to focus on do we want to focus on productive struggle do we want to focus on assessment practices to, you know like there that's kind of more grouping more bigger base so we start with the students and we say hey what shifts are going to require and then what are we going to focus on? Like, what are those moves we're going to help actually create change on with, with our practicing teachers? Um, and then that helps dictate what support you need to provide as a coach or a coordinator um, in, your, in your system or in your schools. Um, and then you help shift those practices uh, by helping teachers shift. This all makes sense. This is, I think, the cycle that we sometimes, you know, most of the time we think about. And when we provide professional development or coaching or a PLC work. Um, and then that provides those, those opportunities for students to engage in those, those opportunities. So, so then that's a cycle. All right. So now here's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of a flaw in, in our opinion here with, with this model. Like this model is, com makes complete sense to me. I'm sure it makes complete sense to you right now that, that this, this is, a, is a working model. And it is a working model. However, the middle component makes some assumptions, right? So, so the middle component here of shifts in the classroom, and this is where we provide support as coaches, um, the shifts in the classroom that you're trying to make. So if we think about the eight fact teaching practices from principles to actions, um, if we think about other teaching moves or structures that you're putting into classrooms, like, like maybe you maybe you're looking at PTC, like building thinking classrooms, or you're looking at the five practices for orchestrating productive mathematical discussions as a framework for your lessons, like these shifts that we have to make as teachers, they require us to be, uh, and I think, I think, uh, the author of the five practices, uh, Peg Smith, and Mary K. Stein, you know, call this robust teaching, Flex flexible teaching. We have to be able to like give up the script 
that we used to rely on and be able to teach flexibly. Um, and, the, and, the, and the shift here is tough to make, right? And this is why we get pushback from teachers or the buy-in or the adoption isn't happening in the way we want. And, and the reason here um, is that teachers are asked to teach in this robust way and shift practice, but they're, but, and they, they might not be able to articulate this, is that they don't have the experience with the conceptual understanding of math that we need in order to be able to make those flexible moves in live time. And this is, you know, the five practices completely tries to address this by the anticipation stage, you know, stage one, you know, anticipate what, what's gonna happen, which means we have to unpack the math um, so that we can understand that math so that we're ready to make those, those instructional decisions in live time, you know. Um, Tom Shimmer, you, you know, we, we interviewed him on our podcast as well. And, and he had a great quote that said like, plan with precision so you can proceed with flexibility. And so the planning here assumes in this model that it's just the moves that we need to look at, but it's not. We have to understand the mathematical concepts, conceptual understanding of that math. Most times we're missing that in our professional development or our coaching, helping our teachers just get comfortable with the mathematics that they're supposed to teach, which means can they put the calculator away and, and represent their math in, 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 you know, using concrete, representational, abstract? Can they use models? Can they use strategies? that they really want their teachers to use or their students to use because that's what we want in our classrooms. We want those shifts to create those experiences for our students. So we've modified that framework to, to kind of focus on this framework, which, which combines some, some work here from this book, Systems for Instructional Improvement. Uh, we'll be looking at that in, in, other, in other lessons uh, for sure. Um, but, you know, we just slightly modified their framework to look at this framework. I'm going to move I'm going to move this out of the way just so I can zoom in here a little bit better. So the framework starts the same way. It's like we do want the mathematical practices to be first and foremost as the goal, as our, you know, our objectives, you know, and that's, that's sometimes how we choose those objectives are really related to the practices. And that's what these objectives down here really represent is which, which zones are we going to focus on to get that, okay? Now, this is the model that we want to think about when we're thinking about our objectives though is that we do have to think about what shifts we have to make so there's shifts in classroom practice for sure we do need to help shift our teachers moves but we also have to help shift their mathematical proficiencies so we have to think about what they're missing what are the gaps in their own mathematical understanding that they are they need that kind of unlocks the door so that they can do these shifts so i think the other model this model kind of assumes that that's all happening here we're calling it out. We're kind of saying we need to focus on that and, and we often don't. So we do need to say what mathematical practices should we be focusing on? Sometimes that becomes a major focus zone that you want to work on. Um, it might be a certain strand in mathematics. It might be uh, a certain strand that we want our teachers to get better on. We've seen districts choose strands or ideas or con concepts or focus just on models and strategies for their teachers as their objective, as their focus zone, you know, in year one with, with, you know, no actual focused or measurable focus on what it looks like in the classroom yet until they feel like their teachers are exhibiting some improvement on that understanding of, of those shifts. The other two components here are essential as well, is, is that we do need to make sure that we focus in on beliefs. You know, a, a lot of the discussions we've had with, 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 with leaders like yourself say that that's a major concern is, is that teachers don't believe that they can do this and that's actually essential for them. They have to believe that they can do this work. And sometimes you might want to make that a focus zone that you want to kind of make an awareness around is, is what are we going to do to help teachers believe that they can do this. Now, I'm going to zoom out here because as I say that, you know, you can rest assured that even if you did not make that a focus zone as one of your objectives to focus on for the year, right? Objectives are these big kind of lofty kind of zones or areas that we want to look at. There is another lesson right after this that kind of walks you through how to create your objectives. This isn't, this isn't the lesson that does that. This is kind of like the framework we need to kind of just wrap our mind around what we could be choosing and why we want to choose some of these things. Um, but we, you know, when I zoom out to our frameworks and our lessons and our stages, uh, we are going to be getting to that. We are going to be, you know, focusing in on how do we get teachers to change beliefs. You know, that's going to be happening in the build capacity stage down here. Um, it's going to be happening in the inspire growth stage over here when we have our flywheel effect uh, for bright spots. Um, it's, it, we are going to address that. Okay, so that is built in to the work that you're going to do. Um, but we also have to have our teachers believe 
that students are sitting in front of them are capable of doing this as well. These are the four components we do need to make sure that we build into our coaching, we build into our professional development plans, we, and um, the support that we're providing teachers so that these mathematical practices, some of these mathematical practices can be exuded in the next few years in our classrooms. We can't make all the changes at once. We need to focus on some. And that's kind of the framework we want. So the framework here is let's, let's look at the practices as, as a starting spot. Let's then think about these four things we do need to address. And then let's then shape which zones we want to work on. And I'm going to argue that you should probably pick two, maybe three, three. The third one might be like, if we have time or if we go through the first two in, in following the, the frameworks and the commitment level that we can unpack, which we will get into, then you might say a third one is there. So maybe you think of an alternate. Um, but oftentimes from doing this work with districts and schools is that two is loads. And I know that you're going to feel like we need more, but focusing on less will get you further faster. So this is the framework I want you to think about. What, what are some of those shifts we do need to make? But let's make sure they're tied to the mathematical practices. What shifts in math uh, thinking do we need our teachers to make? Uh, what is that going to look like? Do we need to make sure that that becomes a focus zone um, for the work that we're going to be doing with our teachers? What about beliefs in teachers and students? Um, do we want to make that a focus zone as well? Um, or one of the one of those combinations. So this is just the framework. I want you to just kind of like keep in mind as you go through your learning, and as you go through some of the structures that you're gonna to need in order to create your improvement plans and your action plans and commitment level to the things that we're gonna to structure together. Um, it will come up, it's, it'll pop up in, in, it's embedded in the rest of some of the work and the learning and the coaching that we're gonna do with you. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to point this out as an important component of, the, of, of what's coming. Um, and your next lesson, you're gonna be diving in to, this is why we had it right next to it. You're gonna be diving in to unpacking how to develop your objectives. Um, there is another training there and a walkthrough template to help you pick those objectives. Which ones are gonna be the right? How do you structure those objectives so that you feel like these are worthwhile to work on? That's coming, all right? But uh, looking forward to uh, seeing your progress as always and uh, we'll talk soon.